What's up, everybody on YouTube? AJ Russ back here with another video, and today we'll be recapping week nine of the NFL season. A lot of games and matchups to talk about right now, so let's go on and get into this video. We can start with the first game that took place last Thursday, a matchup between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Houston Texans, where the Eagles won 29-17. Jalen Hurts returned to his hometown in Houston, where he went to high school in Channel View, and he had a solid game, of course, having 243 yards passing, two touchdowns, and completing 21 out of his 27 attempts on his passes. Miles Sanders and A.J. Brown were both individually able to grab a touchdown as well, and the game actually was pretty close at halftime, being 14-14, but in the second half, really, the Eagles blew things up and were able to win. The Philadelphia Eagles still have a perfect undefeated record of 8-0, being the only undefeated team in the NFL. Next game we can go into is the Green Bay Packers against the Detroit Lions, where the Lions were able to beat the Green Bay Packers 15-19. This matchup against the Lions marked the fifth straight loss for the Green Bay Packers, and honestly, things are looking so downhill for them. Aaron Rodgers really played a poor game. I mean, he almost had 300 passing yards, but in the end zone twice, he threw two interceptions. He had a total of three interceptions on the game, only scoring one touchdown. Everyone wants to point to the fact of the Packers losing Devontae Adams this past offseason being the biggest key which it really is a significant key but he's also having a miserable time in las vegas which we'll talk about in a second but honestly it just comes down to more to that they don't have a lot of playmakers can't say that they haven't tried though because at the trade deadline right before the trade deadline the green bay packers offered a first round pick for carolina panthers wide receiver dj moore and the panthers declined that so that's really insane by them because they're really a rebuilding team and they could have used another first round pick as a luxury but beyond that though i mean the packers flaws are apparent when you watch them they struggle to score obviously with a lack of playmakers their defense, I mean, is very shaky, very up and down. I mean, they allowed the Lions to have 15 points. That's not a lot, but still, it's very up and down, and they just have a lot of inconsistencies. It's really ironic because right before the season started, Aaron Rodgers was bragging and boasting about how he has owned the NFC North and the Green Bay Packers have owned that division for his entire career. And now they're three and six being humbled and the Minnesota Vikings are seven and one at the top of their division. Shout out to the Lions though for this win. I haven't talked about them too much because I mean, the obvious downfall of the Green Bay Packers is really to be highlighted right now, but shout out to Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions. This was only their second win, but he all, he, Dan Campbell is a great coach and I really admire how he gets his guys up to play and play competitively each and every Sunday for the Detroit Lions. Speaking of another NFC North team, the team that we just talked about that's at the top of that division, the Minnesota Vikings, they were able to beat the Washington Commanders. Minnesota was able to win that game 20 to 17. Kirk Cousins threw for 265 passing yards and two touchdowns, throwing for one interception, completing 22 out of 40 passes. I highlighted Kirk Cousins because, I mean, obviously he's been having a better season, but also because there's this video of him on the airplane after the game and he was <laughs> dancing. It was really hilarious. He was putting that ish on for real. <laughs> but yeah, the Vikings, like I said, they're number one in the NFC North right now, having an amazing season. Looks like they'll win a division potentially after Green Bay has dominated division for Aaron Rodgers' a long tenure. And then the Washington Commanders, they fell to a 4-5 and five record. But they're in the NFC East, which is arguably the best division. That same division has the undefeated Eagles, the 6-2 Dallas Cowboys, and the 6-2 New York Giants. And the Commanders are 4-5, and five, and they have the same exact record as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are first in the NFC South right now. So... Hey, that's very interesting. Next game I want to talk about is the matchup between the Patriots and the Indianapolis Colts. And really, it's beyond the game. It's really talking about the Colts right now. But I mean, they lost 26-3 to the New England Patriots. The Colts are now 3-5-1, and and now the Patriots are 5-4. and four. But what I really want to talk about is the Colts hiring ESPN analyst Jeff Saturday and former Indianapolis Colt. And he's one of my favorite analysts. So I'm kind of sad that he won't be on TV anymore. I mean, obviously, he's still going to be on TV as he's going to be the head coach of the Colts right now. Well, interim head coach, as I should say, because that's the official title right now. But it's just not going to be the same without seeing him on Get Up and First Take for me because I love watching that. Those are some of my favorite sports shows. Him talking about his pancakes, you know, because a pancake in football is offensive lineman putting a def defender on their backside. So I'm going to miss that for sure. But anyways, going into the football perspective of things, people are critical of owner Jim Ursay making this move because... Jeff Saturday has only been a consultant, and of course he played with the Colts back with Peyton Manning. He was a center when they won the Super Bowl and everything during this time, and then he went to play for the Packers in his last season in the league, but he's been a consultant for the Colts for a few years, and now he hasn't had any coaching experience, so for him to get this title of interim head coach a lot of people are controversial about it now obviously throughout the past couple of years the indianapolis colts have dealt with several quarterback changes after andrew luck retired then going to jacoby Brissett, then philip rivers carson wentz and then matt ryan who they thought was going to be a solid game manager for them but that hasn't worked and he got injured 
and now second year quarterback Sam Ellinger uh, and they're now starting second year quarterback Sam Ellinger who in his game against the Patriots had a mid game throwing for 15 to 29 completions having 103 yards and one interception not even touchdown like I said the score was 26 to 3 so things look very suspect there star running back Jonathan Taylor did not play in this game as he's been injured but I expect for him when he comes back that the Colts will play through him in the running game because Jeff Saturday being a center they prefer running plays over passing plays anyways and Sam Ellinger he's unproven as a quarterback in this league so far so they'll probably just have him try to manage the game but anyways though that's the most time I spent talking about a blowout game I just wanted to talk about the Colts a little bit but the Patriots won that game 26 to 3 Matt Jones threw for 147 yards 20 out of 30 attempts to passing and then he also threw for one touchdown so yeah they won that game 26 to 3 so let's speed through these next few games the cincinnati Bengals beat the carolina panthers 42 to 21 the Bengals moved to a 5 and 4 record and now the panthers have a 2 and 7 record quarterback pj walker who had been previously starting for the panthers the past few weeks only threw for nine yards and threw two interceptions he only threw 10 passes in total but they ended up benching him baker mayfield ended up coming back into the game actually playing a solid game baker had a 70 percent completion percentage and he threw for 155 passing yards and two touchdowns now obviously that wasn't enough as they still lost by a dub um joe burrow quarterback joe shicey of the Bengals, of course one of the best quarterbacks in the league threw for 22 out of 28 attempts having 206 passing yards and one touchdown joe mixon had four touchdowns on 22 carries of 153 yards having averaging seven yards per carry so he had a dominant game and that's ultimately why the Bengals won the game i don't think that they'll win the division but i think they'll end up being a wild card the Bengals are in a division that includes the baltimore ravens and the cleveland browns the cleveland browns will also have a chance to make the playoffs as deshaun watson will return to week 13 so it depends on how jacoby Brissett holds things now and there but i think that the ravens are going to win a division and the Bengals. i think they'll make the playoffs like i said before but i don't think that they're gonna really do anything similar to last season i mean that was an anomaly in my opinion i know the video is probably getting a little long and like i said before in the previous videos it's a recap i don't want to be 20 minutes long so anyways the next game that we're going to talk about is the la chargers they beat the atlanta falcons 20 to 17. justin herbert had an efficient game throwing 30 out of 43 in his passing attempts he also threw for 245 passing yards having one touchdown and one interception austin eckler running back of the chargers also had 14 carries one touchdown not a lot of yardage and 47 yards but i mean it still helped and they ended up winning the game on the other side atlanta falcons Falcons quarterback Marcus Mariota had a 52% passing completion percentage. He had 129 passing yards with no touchdowns or interceptions. Wide receiver Cordell Patterson had both of their touchdowns, having 44 yards and two touchdowns. There was multiple matchups that actually had a score of 20 to 17. Another one is New York Jets beating the Buffalo Bills. They won that game 20 to 17, moving to a 6 and 3 record, and the Buffalo Bills now have a 6 and 2 record in that same division. Buffalo Bills superstar quarterback Josh Allen had a total of 291 yards, having 86 rushing and 205 passing. He had two Two touchdowns rushing on nine carries for 86 yards like i said a second ago and his passing was kind of iffy he's obviously a top five quarterback and one of the most dynamic players in this league but on the first possession against the jets he had a head scratching interception that he threw and like i mentioned he ended up having two interceptions in total in the game elaborating more on josh allen's performance against the jets in a loss on sunday later in the game as they were trying to win which they ultimately fell short he ended up suffering a ucl injury in his elbow and they're right now trying to determine the severity of the injury hopefully the injury isn't too serious but if so the bills will have to start backup quarterback case keenum and i think he'll be able to hold the fort down similar to how cooper rush did in dallas because case keenum like five years ago he was starting for the vikings and making some solid runs showing a little love to the jets though they are for real man i mean zach wilson he had a solid game 18 for 25 154 passing yards one touchdown really being a game manager not trying to do too much i think that's the key for them right now but their defense is for real you have sauce garner i certainly think he's the defensive rookie of the year then you have quinton williams and then going back to the offensive end you have garrett wilson He's a star wide receiver. He could be a candidate, at least for offensive rookie of the year. He had eight receptions and 92 yards in this game, averaging 11.5 per reception. So, hey, the Jets, I think they'll make the playoffs. And this is the first time they've been good in a while. Two lackluster teams right here. I'm going to talk about real quick. The Las Vegas Raiders blew a 17-point lead to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And they ended up losing that game 27-20. to The Raiders now have a 2-6 and six record. And the Jaguars now have a 3-6 and six record. And I don't really want to talk too much about these teams, man. Look, the Raiders, they were talked about being potentially a solid team a playoff team that's obviously not the case and you could argue that head coach josh mcdaniels who's in his first year being the raiders head coach could end up being fired similarly to afc west opponent the Denver Broncos, who had Daniel Hackett, who's also been struggling. So those two teams, they have to be marked as some of the most disappointing teams in the league. I mean, that, that's just poor execution. Losing a 17-0 lead to the Jacksonville Jaguars, like, it makes no sense. I mean, Trevor Lawrence, we think that he's going to be a good quarterback in this league for a while. But also, like, they aren't 
that's spectacular. I mean, they're three and six, so there's no excuses for that. The Miami Dolphins beat the Chicago Bears 35 to 32, improving to a six and three record. Both quarterbacks, Justin Fields and Tua Tagovailoa, performed greatly in this game. Tua Tagovailoa had 21 out of 30 attempts completed and having 302 passing yards and three touchdowns. So, hey, like I said before, Miami Dolphins play better with Tua, and that's facts. And they've been winning too, so they're looking good. And then talking about Justin Fields, he had a total of combined rushing and passing yards of 301 yards, running for 178 yards on 15 carries. He's been balling the past few weeks even though the bears have lost and taken some l's they've been playing better and i think there's no doubt that justin fields is the quarterback for the future in chicago and all those questions you can bury those just like you can bury those similar questions about tua going into the season and even jalen hurts these quarterbacks you have to give them time to develop but once they do it's well worth it the seattle seahawks beat the arizona cardinals 31 to 21 now improving to a six and three record and the arizona cardinals now have a three and six record the opposite record of the seahawks geno smith is having the best season in his career with no doubt passing for 275 passing yards in that game having two touchdowns one interception and 26 and 34 out of his attempts he's just been playing great like he said they wrote him off but he did not write back and he's playing great and i'm really surprised to see the seahawks success but i'm also happy for him because i mean that's really cool and they easily won that trade against the broncos which would sound crazy to say back in march talking about everything when the trade went down and then talking about the arizona cardinals i hate to say this but i fully expect head coach cliff kingsbury to end up being fired at some point i hate to say that but they're just not performing i mean you have kyler murray who's supposed to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league i mean and obviously you can put this somewhat on him i mean he had 175 passing yards and two touchdowns but you expect more out of your you expect more out of your superstar quarterback who you extended this past off season to a buku amount of money so i mean there's really no excuse for that a three and six record is really unacceptable there and if arizona wants to be relevant they have to go on a run real quick or things are going to change dramatically i predict in the nfc we had a rematch of the nfc divisional round the tampa bay buccaneers played against the la rams winning 16 to 13 really most of that game was hard to watch for me i just had it on in the background i hate to say that but that's just how it was i mean these two teams have been struggling this year they had identical records before tampa bay won this game now tampa bay is four and five and now the rams are three and five and Tom Brady, he had a great game. I mean, he threw for 36 out of 58 attempts. I mean, the efficiency with him hasn't been the issue. I mean, he had one touchdown. So, I mean, I guess you can say he had a solid performance. I mean, what you expect out of Tom Brady for the most part. But, I mean, I guess you could say more touchdowns. But, really, like I said, this game wasn't too much. These teams have been struggling. No one expected these teams to be under 500 going into week nine and now going into week 10 into the next week. So a lot to be said there. L.A. Rams just struggling overall. Matthew Stafford only had a 47 percent completion percentage throwing for 165 passing yards, one touchdown. The touchdown that he had was to Cooper Cup. But I mean, at the end of the day, man, it's just I don't know. It's been a huge drop off for the defending Super Bowl champions. Two more games we got to chop it up about. So the Chiefs beat the Tennessee Titans on Sunday Night Football 20 to 17, and that game actually went into overtime. With Tennessee Titans quarterback Ryan Tannehill sideline for the past couple of weeks, rookie quarterback Malik Willis has started, and they really didn't play too much through him. He threw 16 times, but only completed five passes, throwing for 80 yards. Now that sounds absolute garbage, but I mean, Malik Willis, he was a third round pick, so I can cut him some slack, and really it takes times for these quarterbacks to develop. People expect these quarterbacks to be Patrick Mahomes in their first year or second year and if they're not they're ready to move on from them instantly like it's ridiculous to me so I think that he'll be a solid to good quarterback in this league for years to come but I mean it's, he's not ready Patrick Mahomes of course did Patrick Mahomes things having 43 completions on 68 passing attempts and <laughs> which is insane but yeah 446 passing yards one interception one touchdown and they were able to win the game and he also had a rushing touchdown too so that was pretty impressive so yeah the chiefs like i said they're always looking like a juggernaut a contender and we'll see what transpires with them throughout the season final match of a week nine took place between the baltimore ravens and new orleans saints the ravens won this game 27 to 13 from improving to a six and three record while the saints fell to a three and six record as i mentioned earlier i do believe that the baltimore ravens will win the afc north of course having a dynamic superstar quarterback in lamar jackson and they even traded for roquan smith who played his first game this past monday against the saints so i think that their defense has improved i think their offense is going to be what they are the ravens didn't have star tight end mark andrews in this game but lamar jackson was able to spread the ball around to Kenyon drake he had 24 carries 93 yards and two touchdowns so he had a good game and then he was also able to spread the ball to receivers like isaiah likely james proche josh oliver Kenyon drake of course on the receiving end as well and even deshaun jackson who played his first game with the ravens so hey like i said the ravens are looking good i think that they'll be one of the contenders in the afc going forward winning their division and competing with the bills and competing with the chiefs like I said before, I'm sorry if these recaps are a little bit long. There's just a lot to talk about throughout the league in the NFL. So like I said before, I appreciate y'all watching. Let me know what y'all think about this series and NFL recaps going forward and just how you feel about the season so far. I appreciate y'all watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Follow me on Instagram. 
and Twitter at Swaggy Russ and also on TikTok at Swaggy Russ 2 for cooking videos, shorts, and all types of things. I appreciate y'all always. Hope y'all being blessed and doing well. Love y'all and be great. <laughs>